Welcome to Short Cover Little Metering Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we're here for another hot and sticky installment. Hot and sticky response video responses. <laughs> hot and sticky insertions <laughs> to your literary life. <laughs> oh, people hate us. We've got a lot of uh, questions. Yes, and I, I think there will always be a lot of questions because there's always apprehension towards writing. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I've not not to go over it again, but I have a master's degree in creative writing, and there were apprehensions among people in a creative writing yeah. program for writing on writing. So we're going to try to answer a few questions that you guys have shot towards us. Hopefully, we touch on some bases that make sense. Uh, again, we're not experts at this. Uh, so this is just our opinions of what helps us. Yes. Uh, fire away. Um, we're going to start with the, the questions. Uh, Sylvia from Wish Fulfillment threw out there. Okay. She had four. I kind of broke it down into five. Okay. Uh, how do I choose an idea? Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, well, we do have another video that, depending on how the schedule works, you've either seen last week or will be coming soon. Uh, about genre breakdown and how to start a novel based on the genre. So I think that's a beneficial thing. Uh, besides that, it, there are just a few things that we've talked about that might be good inspiration. Uh, you have to write about something which you find holy uh, and destroy it. Uh, you have to write something you know. I mean, if you're very comfortable in a field and you think you could pull something from that and use your expertise in that piece, I think that's a great idea. Um, Jane from Yes, Miss Jane also threw a variation of this question out, which I think overlaps very much. And I, I'll say here what I said to her um, and what I've said to several people who have questioned, you've got a lot of ideas. Which one has the best characters involved? Because those are the people you're going to be spending your time with. Yes. Now, <clears throat> there will be days where 488 words flow out of you as as if you were sneezing, right? It'll just expunge onto, expel onto whatever it is you're writing on, whether that be a tablet, a computer, a notebook, a typewriter. Um, but there will be other days where you are struggling and you will be sitting there, uh, and we'll address this later, uh, but you'll be sitting there unable to start. And yes. these people, your characters, are those people who will be keeping you company. And that sounds pretentious and that sounds Writerly, <laughs> but it's absolutely the truth. You're gonna want to you're gonna want to route, write about people that you want to write about. Okay. So when you're choosing an idea, or if, if you already know that you'll be uh, taking, for example, science fiction, where you maybe start with a great what if, right? You will have interesting ideas, but you're also going to need characters to get there with. Yes. So perhaps your entire palette of ideas, all of the colors involved, are science fiction. Which of these science fiction ideas can you come up with the most and the most compelling characters for? I agree with that. Good. Okay. Two, she asks, uh, she had her passion for writing and her writerhood semi-extinguished. Okay. Um, due to schooling and things like that, mm -hmm. uh, life in general. How do I get that passion back? Uh... I have no passion for writing. Uh, I, that's, I go back and forth on that comment, but I am the laziest person I've ever met. NaNoWriMo, I had to force myself to do this. Uh, Which is not unusual, challenge. by the way. No, I'm going to have to force myself to do this. And I say this quote all the time because you introduced it to me and it really clicked with me, Neil Gaiman. You have to write every day because that is how you are a writer. It's just like anything you do. Take any job. No matter what you do, there's going to be that introductory period where you don't know what you're doing, where you don't understand what's going on. You're just going through the motions of what you think you're supposed to be doing. With time, those motions become habit. You learn from your mistakes. You learn from your experiences. And that's where you really start developing as a writer. And I believe you find passion along the way. If you have a story to tell, tell it. But you're going to have to find a little discipline. You're going to have to sit down and make the time. You're going to have to force yourself to start. Passion, want to, oomph, whatever you want to call it, is often used as a great excuse. 
the passion will not always be there. It cannot always be there. Your passion for literature will will wane, right? You will question whether or not this is for you. But you have to put in the work. When you're putting in the work, that passion will rekindle. Um, one thing that I will use from time to time to help is I'll pick my favorite novel up and I will flip to a random paragraph and I'll read it. And the magic of literature is such that when you're reading that paragraph, it is not just that paragraph. Mm -hmm. What preceded that paragraph lights up. What came after that paragraph lights up. And what will end up happening when you pick up this random paragraph from your favorite book, your favorite short story, one of your favorites, something that you just like, is you'll be reading that and you will extrapolate on the piece at large. You will always be able to find something from later in the piece in that paragraph. And that is magic. I want to say this was game and again. I could be wrong. Uh, I didn't prep this. This just popped into my head. Uh, some very prolific famous writer said something along the lines of if you write when you are inspired, you may be a relatively successful poet. But you will never be a novelist. But if you write when you're a writer, when you when you write every day, then you will be a novelist or uh, a writer. Yes, it was Neil Gaiman. He also he the the visual that he used to pair with that is a dry stack wall. Yes, there are people who build dry stack walls, and it's just a matter of what stone comes next, mm -hmm. because you have to find the ones that fit. And writing is very much that way. You have to find the next word. You have to find the word that fits, and. Don't be scared of it. Don't be afraid while you're writing, which is something that pops up. And I'm not saying you don't be afraid, young writer. I, I get afraid of my pieces when I'm writing. I'm sure that Hemingway got afraid of his pieces while he was writing. You don't want to put down the next word that absolutely derails your entire novel. Yes. But it will not happen if you do not let it. Do not let that wrong piece, do not let that wrong turn, do not let that wrong word or sentence or paragraph destroy you. And this is creating a first draft. Guarantee, without exception, the final draft that you produce, that you finally say, I'm happy with this, will be entirely different from what you're producing during this. This is just getting the initial words out. Yes. Editing comes next. We'll get yes. to editing in the fall. Yes. Next question. Do I go with a work in progress or I, do I start something new? Uh, in my opinion, the spirit of this challenge is to start something new. Uh, this is to start from a blank canvas or a vaguely prep, uh, prepped idea and to create within the summer months a novel. However, if you feel comfortable starting with something you've already started, and you have a premise, and that's going to get you to write every day, by all means, go for it. Yeah, this is not, um, no. and this is like Nano. Nano, I think, requires that you start it in the Yes. Um, this is not that. If you, if you are, I think Peter Clark, the writer, said that he was already in a novel. Yeah. And he needed to pick it back up and keep that going. That is great. Absolutely. This, is, this challenge is not about rules. This challenge is about Writerhood. This is, there is one rigid rule that you should stick to and strive to go to, to complete every day, and that's 488 words. If that's writing from something you've already written, if that is rewriting the same words you wrote yesterday because nothing is coming, if that's rewriting shit, 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 shit because you can't think, you need to accomplish that goal. That is the goal is to write every day. Even then, if you do skip a day, you have not lost. That is the beauty of this challenge over NaNoWriMo. You miss a day in NaNoWriMo, you're pretty much screwed from then forward, yeah. right? Because then that next day you have to hit 3,300 words. It's a lot. Um, this is not that. However, uh, if you were in the same place as Silvio and you were wondering how do I rekindle my passion and get my writerhood back, I suggest starting with something brand new because it, it may seem counterintuitive. But it is going to take less oomph on that initial thrust to start something brand new than to be sitting there trying to get everything back from something that you've already started. I agree. Fresh start. Yes. Next question. Free writing versus planning. What is the best route to go? Um, I don't know. I think a little bit of planning is necessary. Uh, but I think over planning is bad. I like to go in with a general idea. 
maybe some characterization, maybe I've, I've, got, I've established a character, I've established some kind of theme, plot. Uh, I don't note take, I don't put a big drawing board up, I don't storyboard. I think free writing is where good writing is produced because that allows you to write without restraint. Thought? I think that this weighs very heavily on what genre you plan on writing. Agreed. Uh, if you were writing, uh, I believe mysteries are normally plotted out beforehand, mm -hmm. very largely. Uh, you go in, I think there, you can find templates online for almost any type of, of genre that you're going for. Mm -hmm. But one of the tropes of literary fiction, and one of the beautiful things to realize when reading literary fiction, is that revelations to the character are often real time with revelations to the writer. These will be breakthroughs that happen on the page, whether you're realizing them when they happen or not. And so that free writing is almost necessary to, um, to literary fiction. But again, it breaks down to whatever works for you. If it works to have a bit of an idea, go for it. If it works to have it completely drawn out storyboard style, go for it. As long as you're getting in there and you're getting the writing. I broke this question down again after that okay. to concise versus surprise. She mentioned both of those words, I believe. Um, do you want to talk a bit about being concise with what you're writing versus willing to be surprised by what you're writing? I think you have to be willing. You have to be surprised. Uh, being concise is necessary for uh, certain aspects of a character. This character is, you know, this is his thing. Uh, maybe you've got a concrete setting, some fictional world you've created. You are going to have to have rules and regulations for that world in your mind. Those are going to be concise. But if your writing begins to take you another route, be willing to explore that. Be willing to surprise yourself because you will surprise your readers. Surprise, I think, is, is necessary in fiction. Mm -hmm. But I think that being concise will come on that second draft. Okay. Because you've already got, like, like we say, the, the whole story lined up. Yes. So where can you be more concise on a second draft? Now, Jane from Miss Jane also throws out there, I have an idea but know where to go with it. That's sort of the gist of one of her, resp of her response videos so yeah. far. Uh, you have to find the story in the writing. You have to find the story in the characters. Uh, there is always a story to tell. Uh, and may I quote uh, Adrian Fort six, seven hours ago today when I was talking about what I wanted to do is look at the story of you. Could you find a novel worth in 25 years of your life? Absolutely. There's always a story there. You'll always be able to find something. Be willing to explore things with your character. It'll come. It'll be there. Like I said, I think, I, I think if you have an idea but know where to go with it, you cannot fret on that. You will always be able to go somewhere with it. Surprise yourself. Just throw something in there and see where it leads if you were at a dead end with it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's what the next draft's for. Yes. Uh, Cook's books threw out there that she will be using... Twitter to help her conviction for this, and I think that is wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, we've made it a goal to just absolutely hammer Twitter with hashtag hot and sticky. Uh, updates, suggestions, writers, tips, anything we can think of that would be pertinent, uh, and we highly, highly promote people do the same. One type of fear that is almost necessary to get through something like this is the fear of failure and the fear of public persecution. So putting it on Twitter that you will be writing a novel this summer. The one time I've done a summer novel writing challenge, I was in, I was part of, uh, I was, I organized, damn it, and I'm trying to organize again, a writer's group. And there were, I believe at the time, six or seven other people in the group. Only one was doing this challenge with me. And we knew, at come Wednesdays, I think they were, at that writer's group, you'd better have your damned words or you will be a failure. Not that you'll be a failure here, but you know that that is coming. Let me couple it this way. If you found out about this challenge, I'm gonna say 99% of you are booktubers. You've told people about your booktube channel and you've gotten that face. Oh, you do a YouTube channel, that's nice. Oh. 
we've all gotten it. That's that fear. And if you can willingly say, yeah, I do a YouTube channel, however you need to disguise it and say, oh, this is what I do with it, it's, it's not what you think, you can tell people you're going to write a novel. Yeah. Easy as that. Yeah. Uh, Peter Clark brought up the idea that BookTube's a pretty big community. It is. Writing tube is not. It isn't. And that is what we are hoping to build here, is a community for writers. If I am not able to get a writer's group in Kansas City, Missouri, then damn it, I'm going to have one through the entire world. That's the beauty of technology. That's the beauty of the digital age, is we're no longer stuck in this location. The world is now your writer's group. Yes. And I think that's, that's a wonderful concept from Peter Clark. One thing I was talking about, uh, to, to shift gears a little bit, uh, with Amy, from the Dusty Bookshelf. Amy from Amy from the Dusty Bookshelf. I'm not sure how to say that now. <laughs> um, was the novel palette. Okay. There are novels which will indelibly exist within the palette with which you want to represent your work. Right? I mentioned um, I, I am I am completely going with not really a direct retelling, but definitely the palette of the old man in the sea. I am wishing to uh, take elements from Brett Easton Ellis, and I think that keeping novels with things that you want to represent in your writing present with you while you were writing is a great thing to do. Absolutely. This is, pardon me. This is one thing that is much bigger in Hollywood than writers are willing to talk about. Yes. Um, I was just watching an interview with the guys who directed Civil War. And they mentioned very blatantly movies that they were ripping things off from. Artists, artists always steal from other artists. It's always been that way. Yes. There's no shame in that. There's shame in plagiarism. But, There's shame in plagiarism. But, but when if, you were using things to inspire you, yes. that is not plagiarism. Absolutely not. So having that palette of colors with you, with which to paint, um, is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. And it will constantly be reminding you, I want to put a little bit of yes. this in there. And I that will put, develop your writer's voice. I want this happy tree. <laughs> I want this happy tree. Uh, One other thing that we will be doing uh, on our challenge is a playlist. We will be putting together playlists of songs. Now, I, I mentioned um, sitting down and being blank. Now, the one time that I did a summer novel writing challenge, I put together a playlist of songs. Now, look, I think sometimes and Dalton threw this idea out there while we were spitballing on the way back from a bookstore, talking about, I don't want to write just a trashy novel. Well, the first summer novel writing challenge I did, I wrote a trashy novel. It was during the heyday of the zombie apocalypse. Yes. And I said, zombies aren't really scary. What if there was a werewolf apocalypse? So there's a bunch of songs that remind me of horror genres, remind me of, uh, what's that? Uh, Oh man, there's a song that was featured prevalently in A, Were a Werewolf from Paris. Okay. Uh, an American Werewolf in Paris. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It reminded me of werewolves. So I put it in a playlist, and when I couldn't write, I would put that on this playlist, and it would be there in the background while I was writing. Music for inspiration. Yes, like that novel palette that you're putting there. You, you want to take songs that put you in the idea set, in the mind set, in the mood set, which you're w wishing to convey in your novel, uh, and you just have them there if you can't write. Now, yes. I'm not a fan of always writing with music, but sometimes it helps. Sometimes it's a spark. Sometimes Whenever... you need something going. You need a background noise. You need something. Music elicits emotion. Yes. Whatever motivates you. Yes. And I, how different our playlists are going to be. Yeah. That's beautiful. So if you have a playlist, get it ready, shoot it out there. Let us know what you're listening to when you're writing, what you're going to for inspiration. That's, that's wonderful. Absolutely. Uh, another idea, perhaps. Do you have anything ready? Nope. Uh, motivation. Uh, the biggest apprehension that we get with this is how am I going to find the time? How am I going to do this for an entire summer? I've got a job. I do this booktube thing. I have a family, a life. First off, you don't need a family and a life. <laughs> this is more important. Uh, let us couple with this. Uh, we will be doing this challenge in its entirety. Uh, we both work full time, 40 hours. Uh, sometimes I work 40 plus every week. Uh, we have lives outside of here. Uh, 
I have people that I associate with outside of here. I do not. Uh, I go to the gym, though. He goes to the gym. Instead You're of wanting to get in better shape. You're wanting to get healthier. That takes time. We want to read on our own. In addition, just to hammer in the point that this is achievable no matter what, in the months of June alone, we are going to be dropping at least one video a day. We're going to be putting out in 31 days approximately 35 videos. So that is filming, editing, uploading, reading, reading, commenting, tagging, note taking. Uh, if I may, what time is it? Let me find out. Uh, we are still filming tonight. It is currently 4.18 in the morning in the greater Kansas City area. Yeah, we do what we, what, with what we can with time. We understand that you have a life, and we understand that that is important. But there is always time for improvement. And there's always time to do more. Yes. To quote Bill Nye, whenever someone asks, you know, what should I study? What should I do? Do it all and do it now. Do it all and do it now. How else can you change the world? If you want to be a writer, you have to write. And the first step with writing is dedication to writing. There will be days where it is painful. Yeah, absolutely. You will have your palette to fall back on. You will have your peer pressure to fall back on. You will have your playlist to fall back on. What we're trying to say here is if we can make it work, you can make it work. Regardless of whatever situation you're facing in life, you can make this happen. And we hope you can. We hope you're successful in this and you're really proud of something that you've written come October. That's the goal. Uh, so and make we, it happen. <laughs> we often say that this is not about rules. And it's not. Say that you live a life that is, maybe you've got 19 children. This will not be possible at 488 words a day. Set yourself a minimum of 200. And on days where you can get 488 words a day, you can get it 488 words a day. Say you got a day off and you get to smoke a cigar, you write a thousand words during the time of that cigar. What this is hoping to achieve is that we're promoting writing in whatever form. 488 is what we're shooting for. We want the full novel in the months of summer. If you make it, awesome. If you don't make it, awesome. You grew as a writer. Absolutely. You created your writerhood, and this is the first step to being a writer. You can't be afraid of failure. If, 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 I can't remember whose quote it is, but if you've never failed at anything, it just means you've never tried anything. So, if you have sympathy for us for filming don't. at 4 o'clock in the morning, trying to get don't. all this done, hit that subscribe button. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow Hot and Sticky, hit that subscribe button. Uh, comment below. Let us know what you're talking about. Get those response videos out there. Push this. Drag your friends into this. Let's create some writers. Create the community. Let's make it happen.